Well, good evening, everybody. It's Dave from Wine with Dave. I hope you're having a good night. It's Wednesday. It's halfway through the weekend. Yeah! Halfway through the weekend. Uh, I'm not drinking wine tonight. Tonight is tea. I This is the first time, and it's episode 82, and it's tea with Dave. Earl Grey with Dave. That's a first. 82 episodes. Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, am I in focus? I'm a little out of focus. T, man. T gets you in focus like nothing else. I hope everyone's doing great. It is November 17th, 2020. It's wine o'clock. Episode 82. I've been doing this for... Well, 82 episodes since April 1st. And, you know, I was adding up every Wednesday leading up to the end of the year. And I'm going to I'm gonna stop it in about five weeks because I'm going to take the winter break. Start up in January. And I'm like, well, when does my 100th episode land? It lands on the night I started Wine with Dave. How cool is that? Well, March 31st, the night before. But the first night I went live where everyone said, you going to do this tomorrow night? So I said, all right. So April 1st was the day I launched. So that was that's cool. I just thought that was pretty wild. Anyway, um, I'm feeling good. I'm uh, laying off wine a little bit, liquor a little bit, uh, just because, I don't know, just because I'm really getting into tea. I used to be into tea, and tea is really good. My grandmother used to drink a lot of tea, old Irish woman. I used to remember her drinking tea all the time. She took out the tea bag and she'd wrap it around a spoon and squeeze it and throw it in the garbage. I would take it out and pull it out, rip the string off and take the wet tea bag because it looked like a piece of steak and I would tease my dog. I would like, you know, and he had bad sense of smell so he couldn't smell it, but it looked like steak. And one day I dropped it and he <laughs> bit it and all like tea just... Yeah, I, I was that kind of kid. Hey, um, it's your first time here. Go ahead and just follow my page. I've got a really awesome guest tonight. It's Abstract Night. Abstract Night. Um, and what else? What else we want to talk about? It's kind of chilly in Rhode Island today. Um, give me some likes. Oh, and go ahead and share this page. Just, you know, go right below this video. I think it's over... Is it over there? I think it's over there. It says share. If you click that, that's like giving me a tip. I would appreciate it. Just click share, and then it says to where. Just say to your page. Just share. Just get it on your page. Let your friends know you're watching me. All right? Hey, we're going to start with the first segment. This is good. Everyone loves it. It's called Did You Know? All right. Where did we last leave off? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? The average person will spend six months of their life waiting for red lights to turn green. Wow, six months. That's not a long time. I would have guessed it would be two years. Did you know a bolt of lightning contains enough energy to toast 100,000 slices of bread? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Useless fact. Here's another one. You guys into phobias? Shareophobia, like share, sunny and share, you know? Shareophobia is the word for the irrational fear of being happy. There are some people that just, they're petrified of being happy. I find that funny. No, I'm, I'm kidding. That, that's me. For all you cheerophobias out there, I didn't mean that. That was... That, that's, that's mean. That is mean. Um, did you know the inventor of the Frisbee was turned into a Frisbee as after he died? Steady Ed, that's his name, Steady Ed Hedrick invented the Frisbee in 1950, then went on to create the sport of a disc golf in the 1970s. He lived for the Frisbee, his wife said, of the inventor of the classic American toy. But when he died in 2002, his final wish, 
was to have his ashes turned into what else but a frisbee. His son said it was his father's dream that they play with him after his death and that he might even actually end up on someone's roof. They played with their dad. They just threw him around. True. That's that's why you come to the show. That's why you come to Did You Know. Hey, who's here? We got Michael White here from Scotland. Adam Butter. How are you, Michael? Good seeing you. Wow, not a lot of people on. Not a lot of people on tonight. What's up with that? Um, one in three divorce filings include the word Facebook. That's that's pretty scary. Stay off Facebook. Did you know that blood banks in Sweden notify donors when blood is used? That's cool. When they use your blood, um, it would be good to know. Roosters have built-in earplugs. Did you know that? They got built-in earplugs. Those jerks. They wake us up. The Netherlands is so safe, it imports criminals to fill their own jails. That's interesting, huh? Michael White, I'm in the mood for a raid, feeling a little pagan. There you go. Roosters have earplugs, Michael. Michael White is from Scotland. He's been a, uh, a listener, a watcher of the show. Michael, we gotta connect. We gotta, we gotta talk, my man. Are you like uh, six hours ahead? It's 9.06. You're probably 10, 11, 12. You're, you're probably 2 a.m. Let me know. There was a secret baseball hall of fame inductee. I don't know if you knew this. In 1988, a bar owner visiting the baseball hall of fame in Cooperstown, New York, made a surreptitious, he just made an addition to the honorees in the baseball room. He slipped in a photo of his dad wearing a baseball uniform into one of the glass cases. It remained there for six years before anyone detected that it did not belong there. How cool is that? Some people make their father live on forever in Cooperstown, New York. Baseball Hall of Fame. Other people make their dad into a frisbee and hook him on a roof. To each his own. Did you know that Sears used to sell houses? Did you know Manhattan tap water isn't kosher? Did you know the water bottle expiration dates are for the bottle, not the water inside? All right, here we go. Three interactives. Animal shelters are slammed on what day? What day do animal shelters um, get slammed with a bunch of animals getting dropped off? Uh, number two, the most requested funeral song in England is by what band? Most requested funeral song in England. And lastly, what inspired the dashed lines on the road? You know those white dashed lines? Bzz, 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 bzz. What inspired that? All right, that's it for Did You Know? Anybody want to guess? Michael, it is... Hi, it's like 2 a.m. here. Nice. Did you go out clubbing? Did you go clubbing in those hills? Edinburgh is very hilly. They also have, I was there years ago. Um, there's a photograph museum, right? Pinhole photo museum. I, I remember that, the, the museum. A lot of, lot of clubs. I had fun. I went with a friend of mine years and years and years ago when I was a little tyke. Um, I liked Edinburgh. Edinburgh. The guy on the plane said, it's like Americans saying bread and butter. That's how you say Edinburgh. So I never said Edinburgh again. I would always say Edinburgh because that's what it is. All right, so you guys ready? Animal shelters. When do people drop off their animals? What day is that? What day is that? Unless I'm clubbing Saxons. <laughs> Club them Saxons. Um, all right, it's July 5th. July 5th, animal shelters are slammed. I think it's because 
people get new dogs maybe in the summer, early summer, June, and 4th of July fireworks freak the dogs out and they start ripping up carpets and couches. And I mean, I'm guessing, uh, but that's when it happens. People just, they're like, look, I can't handle my dog anymore. That is sad. The most requested funeral song in England is by what band? Yes, it's kind of a band. And lastly, wow, we have nobody on tonight. This is an odd night. It's a Tuesday. That's why we usually are on Wednesday night. Um, 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 hold on. Hold on. We are live. Facebook. Um, most requested funeral song in England is by who? And who inspired, or what actually inspired the dash lines in the road, in the middle of the road. Does anybody know? Does anybody want to guess? We have people showing up. Tap water doesn't taste kosher anyhow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Queen Hadar. Nice, nice. Carlos Hernandez. Nasty. I don't know what you were, what was nasty, Carlos. I don't know what you were talking about. Um, roosters having earplugs? No. <laughs> Manhattan tap water, maybe. Uh, anyway, all right, last one. Ready? Here we go. The most requested funeral song in England is by Monty Python. When people die in England, they request one of the songs from one of their movies, the Monty Python. Uh, what inspired Dash Lines in the Middle of the Road? You want to know what did that? Dripping milk from milk wagons. That's right. Considered the most important single traffic device, the painting of lines down the center of the road was designed by Edward Hines in 1911 when he saw the dotted drippings from a leaking milk wagon. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And he was like, ah, that's how we divide traffic. That's why it was white. Cool, huh? I don't know. That wasn't a great one, I'll be honest with you. All right, it is November 17th. We're going to get into our guest in just a minute. My name is Dave England. If you're first time here, please, 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 please follow me. Click on follow. I'm trying to build that up and like my page, follow my page, and click share to share it off. And also click some likes. Give me some hearts and likes. Like, like, like. Click on like buttons. Like buttons are good. Uh, starting next week, you know, I usually do the national day, like today's national Scottish kilt day, you know, but the thing is, it doesn't make sense because the day's all done. It's nine o'clock here. It's 2 a.m. in Edinburgh. So I am going to give you the national day for the next day. So that way you'll hear it and the next day you wake up. Um, but I'll stop that next week. So tonight... Is the last night I'm going to do it for today. And do you know what today is? Do you know what today is? Today is this day. Yes. It is National Take a Hike Day. National Take a Hike Day on November 17th encourages us to get out there and hit the trails with over 60,000 miles of trails in the national trail system across all 50 states. There's no lack of opportunity to take a hike. Some of those trails are hundreds of years old. For example, the oldest continuously used trail in the United States is Crawford Path in New Hampshire. The beginnings of the mountain path were cleared to the summit of Mount Washington in 1819. And there's actually one trail that allows us to follow in the footsteps of the famous duo, Lewis and Clark. And if you don't have this app, it's called All Trails, download it. I've been doing it, it's great. You just take a spin, you kind of flip through and you look for a trail that looks good and click it, you drive down there, and um, I've discovered parts of Rhode Island I never knew existed. That's I true. kid you not. These are places without milk drippings in the path. These are out there. So that's that. National Take a Hike Day. So, um, And by the way, tomorrow is National Princess Day, so you, can, you have time to prepare. If you have a little daughter, treat her like a queen. Well, treat her like a princess, right? Uh, what else happened today? Guess this happened today. Yeah. Today, on November 17th, 1970, you're thinking, what the heck is this? 
Douglas Engelbart receives the patent for the first computer mouse. First computer mouse. You've come a long way, baby. Um, Engelbart's career was inspired in December 1915 when he was engaged to be married and realized he had no career goals other than a steady job, get married, and live happily ever after. So over several months, he realized four truths, and he wrote this down. True story. He realized if he would, number one, he would focus his career on making the world a better place. Okay? Number two... Any serious effort to make the world better would require some kind of organized effort that harnessed the collective human intellect of all people to contribute to effective solutions. He wrote that down. Three, if you could dramatically improve how we do that, you'd be boosting every effort on the planet to solve important problems. The sooner the better. And four... Computers could be the vehicle for dramatically improving this capability. This woman married a brain. So, so, <laughs> so he built his life around that. You know, he's like, you know what? I don't want to live happily ever after. I'm going to live by these four truths. He kind of started his life on his married day. huh? Isn't that cool? He wrote these things down. And what did he do? He invented the freaking mouse. You go, Douglas Engelbart. I toast you. I touch your invention every day. Can't say that about Mr. Frisbee. This is good tea. I like this tea. Where's the people? There's like nobody on tonight. This is weird. Usually I have a lot of folks. Tuesday night's a dead night. Got to remember that. Hey, <laughs> um, what else? Oh, it's a birthday today. It's a birthday. This guy... Yeah, Martin Scorsese, 1942, an influential film director, screenwriter, producer, part of the new Hollywood group of filmmakers that include Francis Ford Coppola, Steven Spielberg, and George Lucas. Scorsese's earliest success was Mean Streets, and that was followed by Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, Casino, Gangs of New York, The Departed, among many others. Happy 78th birthday. Robert De Niro, uh, uh, Martin Scorsese, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Hey, um, I'm going to bring my guest on right now. Are you guys ready? You ready for some fun? Ready for some trippy, trippy stuff? Tomorrow night, my guest is, and, and I decided to do uh, this. My, my guest was going to be on election night, and I didn't realize it till a week before. I'm like, wait a minute, no one is going to be watching the show. That would be horrible. <laughs> So, um, and it turns out like 900 billion people were watching. So that was, yeah, it would have been nobody watching. I wouldn't have even been on the show. So I moved it to tonight, uh, which is better. So that's cool. Uh, so please go ahead and share this, share this on your pages. Um, but tomorrow night, my guest is Resin Ed. He's a super creative looping musician, not to miss. Plays drums, guitar, bass, percussion, Keys, the whole thing. He kind of loops his music. He's live and very, very, very creative. Love his music. He is tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. But tonight, you're in for a treat. You're so in for a treat. Um, my guest is Luz Maria Sosa, a Rhode Island abstract painter who has a very special love for shapes and patterns in this world. Check it out. As an artist, I always felt that abstract art was very expressive. Even if it's so minimal, it speaks like a thousand words at once. And it can take you to so many places. And that's why when I paint, I'm more concerned with that aspect, is how to feel outside of this space, outside of this time. To a place that feels more free, a place where you can feel more things more clearly and I felt like abstract art puts me in that place. There she is. Hi Luz. Hi. How are you tonight? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. You got your painting behind you. That certainly looks great 
the look at that. Kettle. <laughs> Let me ask you before I get into this: Do you have a lot of your artwork that you just won't sell and you just want to keep it in your house? There's some that my mom don't even want me to sell. She just wants to keep it in the walls. But there are some I do want to sell. Yeah, yeah, you got to pay the bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love your work. So we met on uh, well Craigslist, but then I went to Instagram, and I discovered some of your stuff, and it's really, really good. It's very unique. You have your own style, oh, which is what I love. I mean, you could just we talked earlier about that. You know, there's there can be some boring artists who might be technically yeah. good, but it's just there's no right. passion or heart, right? So, but I love your stuff. I really, really love your stuff. So what are you drinking tonight? What I'm drinking is a cheap version of Chardonnay. Really? Why is it cheap? It, is it like three dollar? <laughs> no, it's a it's literally a seven ninety nine bottle. Very wow, cheap. you only save the best for the show, right? Well, I save the best. You you know you gotta have the best. You gotta have the best. Hey, so I forgot to tell you, we do something called a virtual clink which is we clink our glasses. So do you want to try that Wait, right so now? Okay, yeah, let's try it. All right, it. so you got to hold your, let me see, you'd be holding it in your right hand. Yeah. And hold it close to you. See, you got to put it in the picture. Yep. A little bit more to your right. No, to your, yep, and pull it back. Oh, you're off. There you go. And on the count of three, we're going to go, and we're going to crash in the center. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Man, nice. That was pretty, that was pretty I should have a clink sound. I actually do have. I do have sounds here. What do I have? I got all kinds of sound. I'm not going to do that. It's, it should like clash. Yeah, it's like well, mine's mine's a mug, but I I should have a glass sound, like a little breaking glass. That would be really good. Um, so let's get into this. You know, I like your work, and I'm actually going to show your work. I didn't tell you this. I kind of surprised, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show this in like that. You like that? Oh Ooh. wow! So we'll show That's we'll show that. that in a second, uh, and then you can describe some of the um, where you were coming from when you were painting. But there's a myth nowadays about most artists; they feel alone and isolated. Are you that type of person? Do you feel like uh, that isolated in your work? It depends because when I first started, I actually felt that way. Like I didn't know how to connect with anybody with in the art sense. Even like in college, I always felt like isolated. And it's not because I wanted to be. It's just I didn't know how to connect to people that way. Yeah. And then once I got out of college, I felt like it was much easier. I didn't have to worry so much about what people think. And it just came off more easy that way. Yeah. But there is a mis a big misconception about that. They always think that most artists they choose to be alone or they they don't want to be around people. It's just sometimes you need that alone time to to think. Yeah. When you're not painting, when like weeks go by, do you feel like you desire that? Like you just gotta get away from people and get get immersed into the into the, the smell of paint and canvas and sometimes other times, I just want to have that alone time to just not have to hear no one. I just want to have a moment of me time. And then there are days where I do want to paint. And those are my, I usually paint on Sundays. Really? The most of the time I paint on Sundays. Really early in the morning. It depends, because sometimes I don't wake up early enough. And those wow. days, I just paint. And nobody's up at that time. Sometimes people are up, but... That, I've never heard anyone say, an artist especially, I get up early, which that doesn't happen. You always night night people, artists are night people. But you get up on a Sunday morning to paint, that's... It's because I'm used to getting up every day really early. Yeah. Because I have dogs, so I have to walk them anyway. So I just might as well just stay up and continue about my day. Right, right. There you go. Well, we got some people leaving comments here. Who is this? Queen Hardar. Queen, ha Queen Hardar. Yeah, that's my sister. Okay. Xavier Delbury. Awesome paintings. Um, Phyllis Lorenzo. 
Lorenko. Lorenko. Great job, That's sis. My so yeah. cool. We get you got you got some family in town. That's good. Good stuff. So welcome. Hey, welcome family. Welcome friends. Um, so when did you start painting? We, we always like a little girl, just always like, mommy, daddy, give well, me some crayons. Well, my mom says that we were always doing art when we were young. Yep. There's a lot of gaps in between that I don't remember painting or drawing when I was little. Right. But, you know, of course, your parents remember everything. They always hang up their stuff, your stuff on the refrigerator, or they just keep it in a binder somewhere and surprise you down the road, you know, to, to embarrass you or something. But I actually started painting much more when I got out of college. Yeah. So that's where it really started. Did you like started, uh, visit a lot of art galleries and just take it in? Or I, what made you say, I, I really want to do this on the side? I really, I, I, I feel like I can do this. Was there a day well, or I, someone I, you saw? At first, I just did it. I, to tell you the truth, at first, I didn't really want to get into painting at all. I thought it was very intimidating. And just the fact of like all the materials we would have to get into, the type of paper, the type of paintbrushes, it was so intimidating to me that I didn't want to do it. Oh, so you, instead, did you I think you were getting the wrong stuff or something? Was that what it was? Oh yeah, there were plenty of times I go to the art store and I buy the wrong stuff, come home and I would have to go back and, and get the right stuff. So it was kind of like, like I was a newbie in that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you have people in the art stores that look at you like, well, shouldn't you know this stuff? You're not, you're an artist. Right, well, right. You're, so mixing then, a, you're mixing acrylic yeah. with oil? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. I try to do things that normally other people don't do. You know, that's how I do I just Just the way I do my art. I mix whatever I find that will work well on the canvas. Yep. Whatever works, right? Absolutely. Um, I got a couple questions here. So what was your drive to pursue this? Was there a, a well, deep need? Were you feeling like you needed to do something and give back to the world or something? Which... It's almost I wanted to actually, not for the world, for the first first part. I actually wanted to do it for myself first. It was more a way for I can get out of my comfort zone. I was always in a safe place of how I should do art. Like mm. I, would pick safe, I would pick safe colors. I would pick safe... Um, type of patterns like oh, I'll do a landscape or I'll do like flowers but I didn't want to stay that way all the time so I, I actually wanted to experiment more get out of my comfort zone and do something that maybe I am afraid to do but then at the end result it actually looks fantastic yeah it's you know what it's it's funny so how long have you been painting for honestly it's an on and off thing I can't particularly put a year or month but lately, this year, I've been painting much more than I have ever painted before. So within a year, let's even say two years, though, you already have a style. I mean, you, you're really going after us. You're not like doing landscapes and three years later, you try some different things. And five years, 10 years, you really have honed your design uh, or style. But you've got it already. I mean, you that's a tough thing to find what you're going to do all the time. But it doesn't all look the same. Exactly, because like for me, I feel like my style was always changing. Like if I was doing some type of spiral art or I would do like the splatter art mm -hmm. and then I would do things like like what you see behind me, the more of the abstract kind of art. And I wasn't trying to stick to one thing, but I was mm -hmm. just trying to figure out what I actually like doing better. And I feel like the, the paintings behind me, like the ones you can see right here, I feel like those are yeah. the ones I actually enjoy doing much more because it's like more experimental. It kind of makes me think about the process much more rather than just putting paint on the canvas. Yeah, some people, the casual listener or casual viewer might just say, it's just a bunch of paint. But exactly. there's, there's so much balance in, in this unity and uniformity and all the colors and how they're equally spaced it looks random, but it's it's really not. I'm looking at it going, that's not random. You took time to really think that through. Uh, and that's I mean, how I, I see... normally do it, yeah. I usually, like, sit back for a while. Well, my process is kind of strange. I just sit back, turn on the TV, either pour a, a drink or something, and I just stare at the canvas for a little while, get all my paints out, 
And yeah. I just stare at it for some time because sometimes I just need to process how I actually want the painting to look like. And then right. in my mind, I already have the finished product. I know exactly what it's going to look like. And then I just work like that. Oh, okay. So you're not so much an intuitive artist where they just start to paint some underpainting and then they let it build itself and they don't know where they're going. You already know like what you're doing. Exactly. Very yeah. calculated. Very interesting. That is very interesting. Um, have you ever had an artist block where there was a week where you go, I, I can't, I just, I don't know what to paint. I have that all the time, which is most people be like, oh, but you come up with great stuff. But, you know, sometimes I feel like I paint the same stuff or I usually get like the same type of colors. Yeah. And I had that already several times where I will literally paint so much stuff on the canvas. And then I look at it and I'm like, I hate it. I, I got to get rid of it. So I will take the canvas, go to my kitchen sink, spray it down uh. and wash the paint off. And start all over from scratch. You get the butter just, knife, me, I just, scrape it. No, I honestly, I just scrape it off with my fingernails and get it all off. And then I just start all over. And then some days, like, I had a really bad one. And my mom told me, you know what, just wrap it up. There's another day. Yeah, you win some, you lose some, huh? Well, let me show, exactly. let me yeah. show the audience. Let me show my studio audience what you have. Uh, I'm going to go... Oh, I just lost the page. Let me go back here. Here it is. All right, I'm going to open this up, and I want you to just um, tell me what's going on here, okay, when I open these things up. Uh, let me get rid of me, and then I will add me again. There we go. No, you know what? I'll get rid of me. So just, um, oh, that's so funny. That's the painting that's behind you. That is so funny. Yeah. That's really like, wait, wait, let me put it the right way. <laughs> I think that was... So, I mean, I, yeah, I think that is so balanced. I mean, what I see there is just crowds of people, but there's so many things that can... That's so I mean, interesting. I just imagine like looking at your painting and just getting really close and just getting lost in it. So explain this, the process behind that. So this one, I actually finished that one the date that's on the Instagram, that's not the day that I finished it. I was supposed to a day later. But anyways, that piece took a lot of thought because I actually wanted to do a city, almost like a, like a house type feel. And so I said, okay, what do I want to draw? Because like, I want to I either draw it or even want to paint it. So I started looking up cities and stuff. So the city i looked up is called Bur i don't know if i'm saying it wrong excuse me for the italian folks it's Buran burano that's that's hmm. what i named the piece and it's basically a place in italy where the house is it's like a street or something and there's a lot of colorful houses and they look beautiful it, I, so i tried to depict that as as an abstract form so if you want to look it up there's people who are watching you just you know look up uh, burano Italy, you can see the houses, they're very colorful. So the way I begin this, I don't necessarily paint with paintbrushes. I was actually painting this piece with paper. So I will fold pieces of paper. Wow. I'll put the paint. I wish I had a thing to stand. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be a little bit old fashioned. So basically I will take the end of a piece of paper and I will put the paint on the edge. And I'm basically like, scraping it on the canvas so that yep. it gives that effect wow yeah different size paper or just the one you just use i use one? to tell you the truth i use the paper that is like it looks shiny like laminated you know the ones that you get in the mail yeah like them yep. shiny little postcard things yeah i literally cut those up in pieces and i put the type of paint I want to use I put it on the edges and I just scrape it off like that I just feel like it gives it more of like a thickness vibe to it whether as if you use a paintbrush you can get the same effect but I actually want that um scraping feeling yeah you don't see brush strokes you really don't well, some of them has brush brush strokes but I prefer to use things not people normally want to use you really do think outside the box there huh whatever it takes yeah. to get that job done um, I mean, 
is really beautiful. So, so this is, oh, I, I thought I had it up. Um, Less in the red, Brano, Brano, Italy, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I think I, I seen pictures of that place um, you're talking about. So here's, uh, yeah, there's this one. Can you see this? Yeah. This is where you're working. Is that, so you're using a brush there. I'm using a brush in that one, yeah. Right, not And always, you know what's the though. crazy thing? As soon as I finished using the brush on that, I switched off and I actually decided to use, you know the little parts that come from the canvas, the little wood parts that stretches the canvas? Yeah. I use that instead of a paintbrush. <laughs> so, that's funny. The, that's the uh, stretchers, that. right? Yeah. It's like the wedges that go in. Yeah. So, exactly, the wedges. All right, so this I love. I absolutely love this. This is one of my the, favorite the, ones. I actually like that one myself. The black with the yellow is just, oh my gosh. It's, uh. I love is, that one. That That's the one I did with the wooden pieces from the canvas. And oh, I'm like, I okay. love it. I'm going to just keep using the same strokes and see what it comes out. Well, it's funny because I'm seeing the blue, right? You, you've, And I'm not trying to analyze your work, but I, I got to ask. The blue is first, and then you put yellow over it, but it looks like it was brushed over it, but then the blue wasn't. The blue actually was first, and I used paper for that. Then the yellow, I used the wooden car, wooden pieces from the canvas to, you know, to make mm -hmm. that effect, because it looks a little like it's built up on it. Yeah, it does. Wow. I, I mean, I just love that. That is so... I'm over here marrying my own work. <laughs> I know, I know. You're looking at it going, wow, that's nice. How much like... is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is great stuff. How is, um, have you been selling these at, uh, like, do you go to galleries or you try to go to uh, outdoor recently, markets? I've been applying, I recently, I've been applying to some galleries, but it's different now because there's COVID and you can't really do anything in person anymore. So... I've been doing some virtual galleries. So I've been applying to that mm -hmm. more often though. The last time I've been in a gallery, honestly, was when I was in college. That was a long time ago. Wow. After that, I didn't try again because I, I don't know, I felt very intimidated by the whole scene. So I wanted to try again, you know, get myself into that space again. Yeah, get out there, you know? You don't know, I mean, it's just, you could connect. I mean, there could be someone that's like, that's exactly what I want for my living room. It's almost like a painter is, yeah, you're an artist, but you're really like, you're helping decorate someone's house and they're going to live with your work. Like, you're, exactly. think about that. They they love it enough to purchase it and it can be expensive and it's they're going to live with it every day. They're going to see that and it's going to set a mood in a room in their house where they spend 10, 12 hours a day. I mean, think about that. That's what that's what art can do. It's powerful. That's true because there's, there's a lot of people that put all kinds of random arts in their own home. Like they can even have like a canvas with just like a line on it. And they yeah. will put that at their live room and people will walk and be like, wow, that's nice. And I'm just like, wow, I couldn't even think of that. Yeah, a line, yeah. <laughs> so there you are. Is this a piece of wood that you're using here? Yeah, that's the wood part. Classic material. Yeah, you save on brushes. <laughs> you don't spend it. You get wrong. really cheap wine, <laughs> really cheap wine and pieces Before of wood. And pieces of wood. Classic now let's talk about this. Package. I'm gonna I'm gonna solo you out. Uh, how do I solo you out here? Solo. Nope, can't solo you out. Gonna bring you back. I'm gonna lose me because I want you to talk about this. This is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. That one took so long to do. That was the most frustrating painting I've ever done. It started off, honestly, as you know, the ones that I have on my page, for anyone that wants to view my page, it's LM Sosa Paints. Um, that one, it started off as a spiral painting. Literally, that's what I wanted to do. And for some odd reason, the colors was just not working for me. And 
I either wanted to scrape it off or start all over or, you know, just leave it as is. So I ended up having to bring the painting to my kitchen sink and rinsing it off. As you know, what happened was I spilled something on the painting and I, I, I couldn't save it. Wow. So half of the painting got ruined. So I went to the kitchen, scraped it off and started all over from scratch. What was left over was like um, the divots from the paint. So actually when you touch the painting, you can actually feel some of the marks on it that I made previously. Oh. So I said, I'll just paint over it black and start all over. So I said, okay, it's black now. What do I do? I said, I'll make it colorful. Like that's, that's not much I can do. So for my material that I use on this, it's very dumb and very random. My, <laughs> I use, it's, oh my God, how do I explain this? You know when dog bags, when you buy dog bags from the dollar store, you know the little circle that's in the, the, the bags that you roll around with? Yep. I use that, with that little stick thing to make the circles for that. And I have, because I buy them all the time for my dogs. And they're like, you know what? I don't want to use a paintbrush. I don't want to use paper. I don't want to use wood. I want to try to use something else. That's like circle and I can make that type of design. That is funny. <laughs> you, you just, you just don't I, care. <laughs> I just use the, the thing from the dog. And I started painting circles one by one with each one. Wow. Different colors. And it took me a couple of days to get that one done. But I was I was proud of it because I was like, you know what? That was probably something that I needed to do for myself. Like I needed to go through that so that I can experiment and try something different. Right, right. Um, yeah, so. That you know, and that you left the lower right corner black. It's like there's nothingness I there. I left it empty. And then there's all this like excitement that is away. It's just really unique. It's almost like telling a story. You have to really. Think about it. It's got a double meaning. Yeah, I didn't particularly know what to name the piece, but I didn't want to name it something negative because of what I went through to get through to the finished product. Yeah, so yeah. I just right. named it something positive, something that people can relate to. But then again, to someone else, it, they may not feel that way towards the painting. They may actually feel some type of different emotion. But for me, I was like, let me call this something that I actually love. Because it took me some time. I think it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's such a unique shape. I mean, outside of that lower right corner, it, it would just be very harmonious and consistent and balanced. And I felt like if I was to cover the whole painting, I think it would honestly just, people would just look at it and then move on. I actually want people to look at the bottom type top left everywhere have their yeah, eyes moving yeah. on the painting i don't want them to be specifically just moving from left to right and that's it i mean the fact that the corner isn't painted is just that's interesting there's a story in there now you know i, I love that stuff so and this is a video uh, which i think is glad that you uh took a video of that man the color just jumps on a black background right i mean that's i'm noticing you love black Oh, yeah, definitely. Black's a, a big base for you. <laughs> That's a big base. Yeah. Um, also white. I, I like white, but I need to buy some more white paint. Got to get that white paint, yeah. You pick up the cheap wine when you're at it, too. <laughs> so here you of go. <laughs> you're into circles. They have, they also that so, love from the circle art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Liking it. Um... And there's a video. Here we go. Zooming in. I remember that one. That that one took a while to do. That was a pretty big one. So roughly how many hours would, would a piece like this take? Um, honestly, two days. Really? That I love. That, that That's really good. At least two days. But those ones right there, those are like 9 by 12s All those are 9 by 12s except for the first one that you oh, showed. That small. one's a bit bigger. Yeah, then I'm, that's what I meant. Like, I was doing safe art safe small art small art yeah have you ever been commissioned to do something large like a six feet six foot well recently i got a few people that are interested and in asked for like bigger pieces 
And it is frightening at first because I'm not used to people actually wanting something from what I do. So it, it's exciting at the same time. I remember that painting. That, that one was interesting. There is a flow. There's like, it's kind of like when you see fish in the water and one of them exactly. turns a certain way and then they all go exactly. that way. They're all thinking the same, but they're all different. They're all. That's they're the all... one that my mom, my mother likes that one. Yeah, that that is just, that vibrates. I mean, I could look at that all day. And I love the color oh, behind boy, that. That, <laughs> that light, that ye light yellowy orange out to the red. It's just got this glow. It, really nice. Beautiful work. Is there some gold in there too? Yes, the gold was the last touch of that. And that's crazy that you pointed that out because that was literally the last color. I said, I need something shiny. So I'm like, yeah. gold works. I didn't notice that till I just saw that. Yeah, interesting. And so what's with circles? Is there something about that? I like this. I like the circles. You know what it is? I wanted to make things look crowded. And I wanted the outside to be blank. And I in the future I'm gonna do some bigger paintings like that. But I actually wanted to do this theme of like crowdedness. And it's crazy how right now we can't even be close to people. Yeah. But in my paintings I want them to be like crowded things like it don't matter what it is to you but it's like crowded like my sister tells me in some of my paintings she's like oh it looks like people it looks like fishes but it's it's different for everybody mm -hmm. but i like the circles <laughs> yeah yeah this is i know that's the thing We're, we miss crowds right we're just not around yeah that's that. pretty sad you can't you, even you be around definitely that have a unique style much. without a doubt thank you and that is that is time consuming to do all that Oh, those, all those ones, I did those with an actual paintbrush. Okay. So for those who think I don't use paintbrushes, I do. <laughs> do you mind if I, I ask, uh, do you paint one color at a time or are you back and yes, forth? Yes, one, one color at a time. Wow. So you have to leave room. You have to do a lot of preparing beforehand. Well, okay. the thing is, I just, I just draw a circle and I just have to take out the colors that I'm going to use. And I just try to make, like I said, make room for the next colors. Or sometimes I overlap them. Yeah. Because I don't mind layering the colors. This is I cool. remember that one. That's when I first started to experiment with paint. I was like, let me do some splatter art and see how I feel about it. And you know the crazy thing? I'm not a big fan of the splatter art, but I actually wanted to try it for myself. Yeah, to see, wow. Um, I forget who made that famous, not Lichtenstein. Um, this is great. I know exactly who you're talking about. I can't think of, think of the name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. He'd lay the canvas on the ground in a studio and he'd, he'd with a ladder. And There's a would, whole documentary about him too. He would, yeah. He would drip the, uh, painting, uh, paint over it. Yeah. yeah they, it was, they said that he was always, uh, drunk in paint. I, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. I need to think what I can see. Right, right. Wow, this is this is great stuff. So, I want everybody to go to um, her Liz's um, Instagram page and follow her at l. m. sosa. paints. And you also have an Sorry. arts page. Once you go there, you'll find the other stuff as well. Um, yeah, this is great. The thing is, if you're at a show. And someone sees your work, they're going, oh, that, that, that's the woman who does the circles and the, all the dots and all that. And then, <laughs> then you get known for it. You're not just someone who's technically that's good. That's what scares me because they're like, I, I don't know. Maybe over time I'll get out of that weird insecurity that I have with that. I think all artists feel that way. They feel vulnerable. So I'm, I'm always like that because I always want to make something that people will like. Yep. But now I'm getting to the place where I don't care whether Good. they like it or not. It's, it's, it's how I feel about it. Oh, you'll get kids walking by going, I could have done that. And then they exactly, keep walking by. Yeah. And then you feel like, ugh, your heart sinks. You're like, no. <laughs> if you could, then you would have. And you'd be sitting here selling it for 700 bucks a painting. <laughs> right? You know, A thousand for each painting. Yeah. Or whatever. Whatever it is. Whatever your cost is. Um, 
Yeah, thank you for coming on. And uh, oh, we've no got more problem. questions. Many more questions for you. Uh, so you've had writer's block, or artist block. Um, biggest challenges? What were your biggest challenges with identity during your time furthering your college education and after? Well, in school, well, I went to CCRI Community College right after high school, and I enrolled into fine arts. And of course, they make you take all these extra classes that have nothing to do with art. And then once you get into the art classes, I did have some professors that it just seemed like they didn't want to make or have their students be themselves. And I had plenty of teachers that they, they will try to kind of put me in a box of what type of art I should make, whether mm -hmm. it was like visual art, 3D art. I just felt like I was trying, they were trying to fit me into their reality of what art should be. Yeah. And for me, I was just like, I don't really like that. And it, that's when I felt like I didn't want to do art anymore. Because I'm like, I got so insecure about that whole thing that I stopped doing art for a very long time. And I recently started again by doing the drawings and stuff like that. But that was one of my biggest biggest challenges is having like professors who are, who are art instructors tell their artists or art students that what they can and cannot do or how it should be put on a canvas or drawing. It, it was, it almost felt like my, I had no freedom to express how I am as a person. Hmm. Wow. So it's crazy. Some, some of these people now, I don't know where they are, but I haven't been back to that, to a CCRI in a long time because that, it, it kind of made me uh, insecure about like who I am as an artist and and e even to the point that even their thoughts and like what they thought about my pieces it was really getting to me and I was starting to feel like man do I really suck and I and I started to think like man it's my work I, I think it took me some time to actually just come to get comfortable with myself and accept that yeah. this is the type of art that I make and if people don't like it, they can just sign off. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to have it. Um, you don't have to buy it. Bob Goldberg says Jackson Pollock. That's who it is. That's, that's who it is. Jackson like Pollock. And that's crazy. I don't, even though I'm not a fan of um, splatter art, I like his. He just said, Luz, let your light shine. Yeah, so that's good advice from Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Splatter art. Yeah. Um, Jackson Pollock. Interesting guy. I, I, his, his name his name escaped me. Um, but you've got a very recognizable style, and I, I encourage you to keep putting yourself out there. Oh, definitely. You just sit there on definitely. a chair and just have your paintings around you in a booth in a big field and just let people come up and just sit there and go, here's my babies, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm getting to that place where I'm not so um, scared, but it's it's normal. I know every artist feels that way, but for me, um, it's different for me. I'm trying not to f not care what people think. So you're you do struggle with insecurity, is that that? Especially, a I do struggle with that, especially when it comes to my art. I struggle with that a lot because I'm a perfectionist and I want things to look a certain way. And when someone attacks or criticizes my paintings, sometimes I take it so to the heart so badly that I don't continue. Mm. But so, I'm working with that. Well, let me ask you then. So coming on this live stream, did you feel, and, and be open, I'm just, I want you to be transparent. Did you feel a little insecure? Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on here and talking <laughs> about my art? I mean, what? Yeah, I did because before we went on, I was telling him, like, I don't like being asked questions. I, especially, I don't like when people ask me questions about my art. And when I say I like my art to speak for itself, and I just sit yeah, in the yeah. corner and just let my art do the talking. But it's it's just a, a, a minor insecurity that I think over time will just disappear. It's just all about confidence. So I think over time, I will actually enjoy much more what I'm doing. And right. I won't be so concerned about how others will see it, if people will like it or not. Because I see other art and I'm just like, and I do feel like, wow, I wish I would have made that. I think mm. every artist I've ever felt like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Every artist. 
I see paintings now. I'm like, oh my gosh, if I would have just painted that, if I would have just thought about that. But yeah. it's like, I don't want to think like that. So that's why I don't try to look so much about like what another artist is doing. I just focus on what I'm doing now and just try to master it, perfect it. There you go. Anybody have any questions for Luz and uh, ask away? It'd be great to have some questions here. Get the conversation moving in a uh, little deep dive. So uh, <laughs> you've been painting. Where do you see yourself going in a few years? Are you... Uh, and I know it's it's tough with COVID. You can't go out. Have you been painting more, though, with the COVID and the pandemic? Yes, I have been painting more. But even before that, I have been painting much more. I, I didn't want to, um, uh, how do you say this? I didn't want to lose the ability to paint and become stagnant. So I wanted to continue to paint regardless of how I was feeling. And some days I don't want to paint, but regardless, I will still paint. But it is crazy how now with the COVID and everything going on that is it kind of inspires you to try to do something that you love yeah. yeah yeah so Bob is saying your art is you doesn't matter what people say yeah it's you're expressing it's kind of like having an accent right some people have I have an accent I had someone tell me earlier I was on a podcast I was interviewed on another show and he's like I really like listening to you because you got a wicked like Boston, Rhode Island accent. I'm like, no, I don't. He's like, yeah, oh, you yeah, do. you. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you really do. So I, I'm not going to be embarrassed by it. But it's in the same way, it's like you painting. That's your accent. That's that's who you are. So, yeah, go out there. Go out exactly. there and do it's it. It's like a language I'm trying to understand, still trying to learn. That's your communication tool, yeah. So Bob says, I don't know if I missed this. I got on late, but Luz, what inspires you? What inspires me? Yeah. Honestly, most of my paintings are driven by emotions. It's either whether I'm angry or I'm feeling a certain type of emotion that I don't understand. I will use those emotions and I'll put it on a painting. I'm also mm. inspired by, I love cities. I, but I, I, it's not like I can't paint cities. I just rather paint them in more of a simplistic kind of way mm. without the lights, without the actual lines and patterns and things like that. I yeah, you're not like a realist. Paint. You're, you're abstract. Absolutely. Exactly. That's cool. I like that. That's, there's a lot of story in abstract painting. You have to really, everyone picks a different story out when they watch a painting coming to life. Ah, uh, Phyllis. Lorenko says, have you ever used a palette knife for abstract painting? It does look like Actually, you use one. <laughs> I don't. Good question, Phyllis. you know Phyllis. the crazy thing? I literally asked someone for palette knives. But the thing is, when I get palette knives, I actually want to cut them in half because I want to see what kind of texture it will create with the paint. Ah. It's, I don't know. I like. It's not that don't appreciate the way things are. I just like to experiment and do things different. You know? You're adventurous. That's good. That's good. You I like should it be. spontaneous. I don't I don't I don't like the same things cuz it just gets boring after a while. Yeah. Hey, news to the word to the wise. Anybody want to buy uh lose a gift for her birthday? Don't. She'll <laughs> break it in half. She'll she'll <laughs> she'll smash it in pieces because she just wants to just see what it, it does. Just give it to me broken. I'll use it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd rather have a broken thing. Um, yes, you do, Dave. Um, I don't know what that was about. Yes, you do, Dave. So palette um, people. Palette <laughs> uh, emotions. I get that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't see negative emotions in your painting. I mean, I see harmony. That's crazy. I see usually, hope, harmony. Underneath the paintings, the other layers, the black is usually the emotion. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. All sides were black, yeah. and then it, I'm like, you know what? Let's add some light into it. Let's let's make it more positive, and so that people don't feel like I'm being so. so but morbid. behind the scenes, it's all black and dark. You have a very exactly. dark soul. Very dark and gloomy. Yeah. No. Oh, Bob's like, yeah, that was about my accent when he said, yes, you do. Yeah, I have a thick accent. Yeah, you yeah do. I, I drop really my do. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pronounce my Oz, my R's. Um, true. 
painting is your accent, right, Lou? So thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, what's thank best advice and criti- critique that anyone has ever given you? Because I know you don't like that. It, it, it's hard for you to take that as a younger painter. But what's the best advice you've ever gotten from your work? Oh, and I got a, a couple of advices, but the best one I got is from one of my mom's friend, close friend, and he always told me to just paint. Don't care about how anyone, what don't care about what anyone said. Just paint and be you. And you know he will say this all the time to me. I go, mm hmm, mm hmm. And at the back of my mind, I'm like I'm thinking other things. I have that has nothing to do with what he was saying. But then it will come to me when I'm painting, when he says, just be you, just paint. Stop worrying about what everyone's thinking. Mm. And as simple as that is, and I know anyone can say it, but I always I always take that and, and I keep that thought the whole time I'm painting. Because if mm. not, then I'll just, I'll, I'll stop painting and I won't finish the piece. Really? All those voices in your head, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Maybe your style is uh, you're communicating. All those voices in your head are coming out on the canvas. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, That's it's very busy. It, it's it's harmony, but it's busy. But it's it's colorful. There's a lot of energy that's bouncing off your paintings. Maybe that's just what's in your head. Like all the suppressed thoughts. Maybe I'm just yeah. Hey, but that's a good thing. That's very therapeutic. Well, yeah. I don't want you to get any better. Don't don't see a, a <laughs> you know psychiatrist or anything because you're gonna have like white canvases. <laughs> they'll probably, yeah, they'll probably tell me just do one or two colors and that's it. Yeah, just do. do you just get a red. That's it. No more colors. Pull all the colors <laughs> from her. Um, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you so um, much for having me. That's yeah, and great. so I want you to stay in the green room. I'm going to put you in the green room and uh, just hang on till after the show. We'll have a little, what I call the Wine with Dave after party. Oh, Yay! Nice. With, awesome. with Earl Grey tea. And your $7 wine. So, something good. <laughs> yeah, so just stay on there. Thanks so much, Luz. I want everyone to follow her. Thank She's got you a so Facebook much. page. She's got an Instagram page. Just go on there. L dot m dot sosa dot paints if you do anything tonight open up instagram go there follow her like give her some comment likes. subscribe <laughs> and subscribe yeah subscribe take care liz take care thank you that was great it's great having some uh artists in the house do i really have an accent i don't yeah, know no. do i really um I know I do. My wife says that I say fair the same way. There's a fair, you know, when you go to the country fair or the county fair with the horses and the cows and all that. And then there's the um, fear of getting bit by a dog. Oh, and yeah. then um, that's not that fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I say fair the same way all three times, but I don't know. Um, she's got her own issues. She pronounces milk, <laughs> milk. So there, they, they are there, whatever. Yes, I'm a Rhode Islander. Um, hey, I like to close with a joke. And this one I actually wrote years and years and years ago. I've been thinking I got to throw out a nice stupid joke at the end of every episode. And it needs to be stupid because that's kind of, uh, the theme of the show a little bit sometimes. Um... So, and I tie it in with the guest. So we had a, an abstract painter. So here it goes. It may not be good. It may not be good. <laughs> but uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, guys. How many postmodern abstract conceptual artists does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> Brown. <laughs> That's so bad. Brown. Take care, everybody. Be nice to each other. We all have an expiration date.